Let's take a look at the NVIDIA H100. This is the new hopper line for our data centers and Exact has been kind enough to let me take a look at one of these systems that I am accessing remote. It's got actually two H100 GPUs on it. So this is just an introductory video showing you the H100. We'll talk about where, how this amazing GPU fits into the, the overall lineup of GPUs that you might be using. So let's Let's begin by just looking at the specs for this amazing system. This is a 4U rack mount, 4,000 watt uh, titanium level power supply. It's got dual AMD 96 core GPUs running at 2.4 gigahertz, two NVIDIA H100 80 gigabyte GPU. So that's 80 gigabytes on each of these. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. This is this is some serious dollars of GPUs. I've seen H100s, and there's three different types, but I and these are the PCIe. I've seen those go for around 40k US dollars. So this is like a couple of cars here easily. And then a massive amount of RAM, 24 times 32, and quite a few quite a few PCIe um, NVMe disk storage, or I guess you wouldn't even say disk storage, but fixed storage. This is the machine here. You can, you can see it here. The GPUs are here and here. So this is the PCIe version of, of these. And these do use the, the fifth generation of PCIe. You can see there is no NVLink going on in this particular system, but you can see the three slots here for NVLink. NVLink really only exists on Hopper anymore, at least of the current GPUs. This has been moved to the data center. I assume these are placed on opposite ends for, for cooling reasons, but if you were doing the the NVLink, you would definitely move them closer together. You can see the massive amount of memory here on this system and the dual AMD CPUs right here. This is a extremely, extremely advanced system. And of course, the star of the show, the H100 right there, clearly, clearly visible at the, at the one end of the system. So H100 GPU, you can see here is what it would look like with NVLink, with those three slots made use of and inserted in this computer anyway in, in pairs. If you look at the data sheet for this GPU, one of the first things you'll notice is there's three different columns here where they're giving the performance for this type of a GPU. You can see at the different types. So in certain scientific computing, you'll probably want the FP64, the 64-bit floating point. But amazingly, for the large language models and these extremely massive, massive neural networks, what you're seeing more and more is actually FP16 and even FP8 performance because you can just really pack those parameters in. There's so much, I don't know if you want to say redundancy or sparsity in the in the, the, the parameters that it can power through with that lower precision. I mean, the, the neural networks are all about dealing with the redundancy of the, of the different weights. So this, this FP8 is really the performance that they're looking at on these three lines. Now, the one that's in the computer that I'm dealing with that I'm gonna show you a demo of in just a second, so stick around to the end. We're gonna run, run some stuff on this and push it, push it to, its, uh, to its limit. But we're dealing with the H100 PCIe. This is the one that, I don't know, if I wanted to buy one of these and try to put it into my, my computer back there, um, that's probably the one, the one that I would, I would buy because it plugs just straight into a PCIe and it is the H100 SXM. This does require the SXM special GPU interface that I believe is used on the NVIDIA, their, their partners and various certified systems that can, that can have these. So obviously you can see here the interconnect and is, is, 
quite, quite fast for the NVLink. The H100 NVL, and this is for a pair of, of those, this is for two of them together, this is really dealing with the large language models, and this is a, a special variant of this designed primarily for those. You can see memory across these is pretty amazing. 80 gigabyte. I have 48 gigabyte on the RTX 6000 ADA that I'm using, but this is close to twice that, and then 188 between those two. And the NVLink is letting you effectively almost bind those into the same sort of, the, the same GPU. If we look at this video from NVIDIA, this shows you really kind of how these fit together. They, the NVLink just allows the, the computers to use those three connections, the GPUs, to, to, to connect and exchange data. But they have the NV switch, and the NV switch within an individual computer allows eight or 16 of these GPUs all within a computer to have direct GPU to GPU communication when you have more than you can do with those direct NV links. Then NVSwitch takes it to the whole next level where you can have up to 256 GPUs spread across multiple hosts. And this is, this is the type of system that you're training these gigantic large language models on where you just connect hosts and hosts together and, and spend some serious money, obviously, on compute. So let's see what it's capable of. If I just pop into the CentOS that Exact gave me the system pre-configured with, you can see the NVIDIA SMI here. You can see the two, the two GPUs ready, ready for action. So let's give them some action and see really what this 80 gigabytes of, of RAM is actually going to get us. Let's see if I can actually make it run out of, of memory. You'll see here I am running Stable Diffusion. I'm using Automatic as my interface. I've got a number of things installed on this. I'm going to do another video where we, we, we play with this a bit, a bit more. But let's just do one really quickly. I will do server computer sitting on Mars. So yeah, I'm not being really creative with my prompts here, but that's not the important part. I'm not... I'm neither a textual nor any sort of artist. But if we just run this, and this is the first time I've generated, so there's not a lot of warm up here. But if I just generate this with the default parameters, that's extremely fast. I mean, if you've run this on Diffusion B or something on a Mac, this first things first, let's go ahead and bump this up to a two, 2048 by 2048 squared image. I can do this on on my GPU with its 48 gig of RAM. This takes a little bit longer to, to generate. And it's running right now. You can see estimated time is about one minute-ish. I will go ahead and jump through that just so that we get to there, although it's ticking down really, really fast. This is, this is great. And you can also bump up the batch size. Now, if I max out the batch size on the 48 gigabyte GPU that I typically work with, it I can I can absolutely kill it. And you see it's it's starting to res in there. But let's go ahead. I'm not going to blather on for this entire thing. We'll get to the next experiment in a second. And there it is. And it is at the it is at the higher the higher resolution. Obviously, I could do with some prompt engineering here, but I think it's trying to make the uh, the server look like like lunar landers or maybe a Mars probe. So let's go ahead. I, I'm gonna why not? Let's just bump the batch size up as high as the the UI is going to let me go, and we're going to go with eight. This might blow the memory, but we'll we'll see. We're generating. It appears to be alive, even looking on, on the Linux side. All right, it's estimating approximately 10 minutes, but this is not something I was able to do on a 48 gigabyte GPU. So this, this is pretty amazing. Now you've got an entire H100 sitting there in, in the second GPU slot saying, why, why are you not using me? Because out of the box, I have not seen really a way to do stable diffusion, at least the, the text to image on 
two GPUs. Has anybody done that? Let me know in, in the comments. I'm not typically dealing with dual GPUs when I'm running stable diffusion. We'll fast forward through this. I do want to make sure that it does actually get there. Okay, it is still cranking along, and as is quite typical for stable diffusion, at least from what I've seen anyway, it's going to finish in less than its initial estimate. Uh, I did not keep track of what time this started exactly. I will, I will certainly do a, a, a more tested controlled benchmark of this in the next video when I talk about stable diffusion directly. I will, I mean, I guess I do have when it started from the clock, so I will put that in in post. But I did log in with another one, so if we want to see NVIDIA SMI on this, that's it running right there. So we can see the, the, two, the two GPUs, both of them are definitely not, not running. We can see, wow, I, I have not, I'm only using 60 gigabytes, I mean only, but I'm not using anywhere near the entire 81 gigabytes that I have available with this. Utilization is at around 100%, or is at 100%, 76 centigrade on, on that. So, I mean, it's, it's working. Almost done here. We will fast forward to the end here. And there we are. It generated the batch size of eight. All right, I'll do some more stuff specifically on benchmarking it when we, in a future video where I, I time this a little bit better. I'll put the number in in post so that you can see exactly how long that take. That did not feel like 10 minutes completely to me. At any rate, uh, thank you for watching this video and definitely check out the systems on Exact if you're in the market for this kind of thing. Huge thank you to Exact as well for providing this system for this video. Was this video like uh, was this video helpful to you? Click the like button, subscribe so that you don't miss uh, any of the other artificial intelligence videos that I put out. Thank you very much.